Assalamu alaikum, brothers and sisters. Excited to uh, be here with you this morning. Uh, excited that today's Talim is going to be uh, presented by uh, Dr. Ramadan, a man who needs no introduction. Uh, the topic of today's uh, conversation is health, wellness, safety, and more. Um, I am going to, uh, in just a few seconds, uh, turn it over uh, to Dr. Ramadan. Just a couple reminders that if you are, are interested in, in asking questions, you can do so by uh, placing your questions in the chat, of course, uh, or at the end of Dr. Ramadan's uh, presentation, uh, feel free to take yourselves off mute um, and to pose your questions uh, verbally. Uh, at this time, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Dr. Ramadan. We're so fortunate to have you, as we always are, this morning and uh, this afternoon, and looking forward to your conversation. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you, uh, Dr. Lionel, for that introduction. And uh, we uh, would like to begin. Bismillah uh, rahim Ashadu la ilaha illallah wa ta'ala la sharika lahu. Ashadu wa Muhammadan abdu rasulu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. As uh, Dr. Lionel said, uh, my uh, I was asked to speak on health and wellness. And uh, I... Uh, took the liberty of expanding that topic to uh, health, wellness, safety, and more. And uh, as we go into uh, this subject, uh, I think it will become uh, clear as to how and why we uh, took that liberty. We'd like to begin by saying that there are two types of illnesses mentioned in the Holy Quran. Uh, Number one, the illness of the heart, and number two, illness of the body. <clears throat> Almighty God Allah says in the Holy Quran 2.10, in their hearts is a disease, and Allah has increased their disease, and grievous is the penalty they incur because they are false to themselves, and Allah speaks the truth. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, describes two types of medicines. One, a physical medicine, and two, a spiritual medicine. And Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was asked by an Arab, O oh, messenger of God, should we use medicine? He replied, indeed, O oh, servants of God, use medicine. For every malady Allah created, he also created a cure except one. One who acquires such knowledge and will benefit from it, and one who ignores it will forego such benefits. The Arabs ask, which is the one that has no cure? He replied, old age. Alhamdulillah. Now, you may ask, what, does the, what role does the physician play? It's a good question. And it's narrated in the Israelite tradition that God's bosom friend, Abraham, peace be upon the prophet, asked God Almighty, where does disease come from? God replied, from me. Abraham asked again, then where does the cure come from? God replied, also from me. Then what does the, then what about the physician? Abraham first asked. God Almighty replied, a man through whom I send the cure. Alhamdulillah. Those few quotes are very heavy and carry a lot of information and guidance. You may ask, well, what about scientific method, scientific medicine with the use of blood tests, MRIs, research studies, pills, and other treatments? According to Imam Ahmed, God's messenger was asked, O oh, messenger of Allah, 
you see all these amulets we, call, we carry, prayers we recite, medicines we take, and other preventive routines we use for recovering from illness, do any of them obstruct God's decree? God's messenger replied, they are part of God's decree. Alhamdulillah. That gave us a lot of insight. So this invited us to take an expanded view of health and wellness. You see, there's physical health and wellness and spiritual health and wellness. It is not either one or the other. The impulse to capitalize Satan's influence can distort things and break up this body of knowledge into components so that they can be sold separately. This is what happened. Snake oil sales and outrageous unproven medical claims to vulnerable sick people. To be spiritual, one does not have to deny science. This was part of the mission of Imam Warthadine Muhammad. May Allah be pleased with him and accept him the highest levels in paradise. As we said in the past, he, is, he was blessed with the insight to reunite science and scripture. He reconciled scripture with modern science. Why is that important? Because science keeps advancing by Allah's grace. So must our understanding and insight of scripture. That must advance as well. Otherwise, we get time locked. That was when the people thought the earth was the center of the universe. And Galileo had that problem with the church at that time, when he said it wasn't, and they insisted based on religious understanding at that time that it was. The Holy Quran is for all time. The Quran is the health maintenance manual for the human being. When we look closely at health and wellness, health is far more than just the absence of disease. And wellness includes physical, mental, spiritual, social, financial, environmental, vocational, safety, security, and succession planning. You might say, what? <laughs> How did all that get into health and wellness? A healthy and well human being. The appearance of health and wellness depends on what year, the environment and the situation. A healthy person in 1865 may not be considered a healthy person now. So what is healthy even for a person or an individual at one time may not con be considered healthy for a person, that same individual at another time. It depends on the standards of the time for comparison and any disparities that could exist. Human beings are adaptable to living conditions and we know that when we look around, we compare our health to those around us. That's just normal. We're products of the environment, our genetics, 
and to the social determinants of health. Remember, and this is key, that you can be physically healthy and fit, buffed, muscular, but you can be mentally sick or spiritually sick. And vice versa. You can be spiritually healthy by Allah's grace, but you can be physically in hospice. That's right. You can be racked with cancer or other serious illnesses and death can be imminent, but you can be mentally healthy and spiritually healthy. We pray that on our exit, that that's the state that we're all in, inshallah. So despite our personal health, that you can also be in danger through your family, through your local community, through your nation and through world affairs. That's right. When we expand the definition of health and wellness, you know that in homicides, especially in the African-American community, most people are shot <laughs> from somebody close to them or family member. So you can be very healthy, but be shot by a family member. Or the danger can be in your community. There's an article that just came out five days ago that listed Chicago's most dangerous communities. Some of you may have read that article. So you may be in good shape spiritually, mentally, physically, but you go outside the door of your house and it's danger in the community due to gang violence and all, or drug dealing and what have you. Or in your country, all of the things that are occurring in the country now that we see from the January 6th commission or in the world now threatening nuclear war. So health and wellness has to take a broader view. You have to not only be concerned about yourself, but your family, your community, your nation, and the state of the world. So let's get to specifics. What can we do now? There is a spiritual prescription. In our tradition as Muslims, it's the Shahada and the five pillars of Al-Islam. Almighty God Allah says in the Holy Quran 2, 208, O ye who believe, enter into Islam wholeheartedly and follow not the footsteps of the evil one, for he is to you an avowed enemy. And there is general prescription. And that would be daily exercise for all of us to lose weight if we need to, to control our blood pressure, control diabetes, get adequate sleep, healthy foods, including vitamins and nutritionals, avoid fast foods, sugar, added salt and soft drinks, fasten our seat belts, vaccines, learn to swim, get the recommended medical screenings, such as mammograms, 
prostate exams and PSAs, colonoscopies, and also emergency preparedness. In our home, in our cars, and supplies for our family and others. Also, in the extended definition, family financial planning and family succession planning. This, as we said, will constitute a healthy human being. And naturally, these things such as stop smoking, drugs, or alcohol would be important that work against your health. Now, how do we accomplish this? There are several medical I guess what I'd say, uh, streams of thought. There's Western medicine, mainstream medical care, conventional medicine. There's homeopathic medicine. And there's integrative medicine. Let's take a look at these for a moment. In mainstream medicine, Western medicine or conventional medicine, allopathy, it primarily searches for disease. It seeks to remove the things which take your health away. Detection and fighting disease are its mainstay. It gives less attention to prevention. It focuses on the use of drugs for treatment. And we see it sort of becomes more important as we grow older. Why is that? Because things wear out and things go wrong. And you want someone looking for that and, detect, and early detection is important for the best outcomes. Then we have homeopathic medicine, natural medicine, herbal medicine, naturopathic medicine. And the treatment of disease is primarily without the use of drugs. That's attractive. Its emphasis early in life Start out on the right foot, good diet and exercise. An ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. That's always good. Good diet and exercise is good at any stage in life or just about any condition that you're in. And then there's integrative medicine. Integrative medicine combines alternative medicine with conventional medicine. It's also about prevention and treatment through good habits, lifestyle, diet, exercise, and natural modalities. Also, it schedules health screenings and checkups, which is very important. You may have questions on that. Alhamdulillah, today the major medical therapies are coming together. They're beginning to realize the contributions that all medical therapies have to make to the overall health and wellness of the population. I've seen this change during my medical career. There was times that the arrogance of Western medicine wouldn't recognize any other form other than itself. That was untenable. 
and we have seen and witnessed that position erode over time. When the great benefits that so many others have to bring to the table are being recognized. Alhamdulillah. We are fortunate here in Chicago that we have the Salaam Community Center under Dr. Constant Shabazz. It's in the forefront and pioneering this movement in our community of integrative medicine, bringing the two forms, Western medicine and uh, homeopathic medicine together for the benefit. So alhamdulillah. And we want to say we've covered a lot and we trust that you have questions that we can bring out more, but we have to address a problem that we face here now with COVID boosters and the flu. I hope you haven't uh, packed away your extra boxes of face masks and hand sanitizer and COVID test kits yet because a winter surge can be seen off in the distance. It's already begun in different parts of the world, especially in Europe, and it's expected to hit the U US uh, by this winter. It's multiple new subvariants are developing. So if you haven't yet got your initial vaccine, get it, please. If you haven't got your two boosters, get them, please. And if you're over 50 and haven't gotten your bivalent booster, get it. My wife and I just got our bi uh, bivalent booster last week. And would you believe in the same week, my son caught COVID. <laughs> Alhamdulillah, he's doing fine. He took our granddaughter to a Disney production. And there were a lot of kids there. And that's when he caught COVID. She didn't catch it, but he caught it. And fortunately his symptoms weren't bad. He was started on Paxlovid and has been taking it. And he is now tested negative. And it's first of uh, two tests that he should take. Uh, to see that everything is going fine and he's had no uh, rebound so far, alhamdulillah. So we packed a lot in this short time. And uh, with that, I wanna open up for questions. And uh, uh, Dr. Lionel, I will uh, turn it over to you uh, so we can take questions on any part of uh, the discussion that we've had, shall I? Thank you, uh, Dr. Ramadan. I, first of all, just appreciate the, the knowledge and the wisdom that you shared in your, in your presentation. Uh, I see uh, Brother Vail has taken uh, the liberty to take him, uh, open up his camera uh, and show his face for the, <laughs> for the crowd here. Uh, Brother Vail, do you have a question you want to pose or comment? No, just a comment. Uh, thank you, Dr. Uh, Imam Ramadan, uh, for this uh, topic. I definitely appreciate it. I mean, something that you mentioned that was so important, like you can take care of your physical part, working out, eating, biting, and stuff like that. But if your mental health is not there, you're not really truly there. So I appreciate your talk today. I mean, I wish like these younger generation can hear what you're talking today. Like I know a lot of older people on here right now, but uh, just hear what you say, like take care of your mental. We hear people like that pass away or that committed suicide. They go, okay, what was wrong with them? They were making money, they healthy and this like this, but they mental wasn't there. So I definitely appreciate your topic today. Thank you, Dr. Ramadan. Email Ramadan. Yeah, that, that mental is, is so important. We, we're seeing the importance of it now. It, it has been played down in the practice of medicine. It was last to get insurance reimbursement and uh, oftentimes uh, when you go to the doctor, uh, he may not uh, do an, a mental state exam yeah. when he does a physical exam. 
and especially uh, uh, in the era of COVID, uh, we are seeing such depression. Uh, we are seeing people who have been isolated in their homes, people who have lost their job, financial strains, and uh, uh, family issues from the close continuous contact that people have that they didn't have with other family members before. Mm -hmm. So all of these stresses are really producing all sorts of new mental illness and bringing out things that uh, were, uh, you know, just uh, below the surface that weren't apparent before. So mental health and anger management and depression and, uh, you know, psychotic uh, symptoms and personality disorders uh, are very key now and they have to be managed because we have said that uh, in clinical medicine that depression can be as serious as a heart attack because a heart attack, uh, people can die from a heart attack, but in depression can lead to suicide and that's sure. death too. So we have to take depression seriously. So thank you for your question. And, no, thanks uh, for that, Mayor Ramadai. We have a, a couple questions in the chat, uh, Dr. Ramadan. Uh, the first is, what is the difference between the bivalent booster and the um, Omicron booster? And then can they be taken with the flu vaccine? So I guess it's two questions, but very much related. Yes. The, the reason it's called a bivalent uh, booster is because it does have uh, uh, some of the uh, uh, old vaccine with it, mm. okay? And it has uh, vaccines specific for, specifically for BA4 and BA5, the new sub-variants that are now uh, 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 out there that we're dealing with. So it's a, a bivalent booster. And, uh, you know, yes, you can take it with the flu vaccine at the same time, you know. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's definitely recommended, especially if you're over 50. Some of the new, uh, some of the new uh, 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 variants that are out there that are percolating, that are just, uh, they are, uh, sub-variants of interest now that are below the radar, um, some of them have developed skills to uh, circumvent our defenses. Yes. We, uh, that does not make us happy. <laughs> uh, that's uh, when, uh, when your defenses can be outflanked by an invader, that's not good. So, uh, you know, we, uh, you have to reinforce your defenses. That's what we're doing with the, this bivalent vaccine, uh, reinforces our defenses. And, uh, but uh, our, our researchers have to be on the job uh, to identify these, uh, these new subvariants and uh, get uh, our uh, new vaccines in production because uh, it's just been a blessing from Allah that, uh, they haven't caused more disease right. and, uh, and, 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 and been more fatal. Uh, we have a, a follow-up question to the comment uh, that you made regarding uh, the medication that I believe your son-in-law um, is taking uh, or was taking uh, once he contracted COVID. Can you say more about that uh, medication? Yes, it's a uh, antiviral Paxlovid. Uh, it's the... Uh, 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 the uh, the uh, antiviral medicine that is, is recommended now for those who uh, uh, come down with uh, COVID. It's uh, uh, taken for five days. It, uh, it's fairly effective. It's uh, 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 President Biden and his wife were on it and uh, it's, uh, uh, it uh, leaves a, me a metallic taste in the mouth. <laughs> Mm. But uh, it, it is effective. Some of those symptoms that you're having uh, uh, will leave once this uh, medication uh, gets started and you continue to take it. So it's a, it's a good medicine. And uh, there are other medicines for uh, those who are immune suppressed. 
or those who can't take mm -hmm. uh, Paxlovid uh, and their condition warrants it. Those uh, monoclonal antibodies uh, that can be given, uh, those are given uh, intravenously uh, for people who uh, need it. And uh, people are still dying uh, at about uh, uh, almost 400 uh, deaths a day uh, from COVID. So uh, it's not small potatoes. <laughs> yeah. Um, I want to ask a question about uh, the importance of diet. Um, you mentioned at the very beginning of your presentation. Well, my question is not so much about um, the importance of diet so much as it is the uh, barriers that sometimes people face when trying to adhere to a healthy diet. And, and two things come to mind. One, um, many people in our community live in what we call food deserts. And, and you know, that term is, has been greatly utilized in some of the conversations. So what, do you, what is your advice uh, for people who are struggling to maintain uh, a healthy diet, who, who live in food deserts? And two, uh, families who struggle with uh, the finite nature of time, right? So it, it takes time and effort to prepare healthy meals. It's so much easier on the way home from work to stop at McDonald's or stop at KFC or name the fast food restaurant. What's your advice for families who are struggling to maintain a healthy diet? That's a good question. And that brings out a lot of other issues. Uh, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll present both sides of it. Okay. Um, there's the body needs what it needs, <laughs> okay? It, uh, it, it uh, uh, the kidneys and the heart and uh, the lungs and the liver, it needs nutrients, okay? And uh, it, uh, uh, these organs really don't perceive nor do they care that you having difficulty getting those nutrients to them, <laughs> okay? <laughs> it says we need this and if we don't get it, then we're not gonna function as well. Mm. We're gonna be vulnerable to disease and we were weakened and uh, that's a fact. Yeah. So the, all of us need these nutrients, okay? Um, we have, if it's, uh, you know, it's just as, as though uh, people were living in countries where there was famine, where there was other conditions, those individuals still need the same nutrients that we need. Yeah. They have to uh, see about acquiring it uh, through other means. Uh, you have to get or use things that are, are packed with vitamins and minerals and uh, uh, nutritionals that supplement your diet. Okay, this is what you have to do. And uh, this points out the difficulty that people who says, I'm going to do it. I'm going to stay healthy by just eating the herbal diet. Mm -hmm. Or I'm going to do it with herbs. The reality is that a lot of times we don't spend our money for the herbal diet to sustain that. We do just like everyone else get the fast foods. Uh, we eat what will fill us up. Uh, we don't stay on the diet. We don't stay on diabetic diets, okay? And we know we don't need to eat the sugar, but we do. Mm -hmm. So when a person tells me that I'm going to do or treat everything naturally, you have to ask, well, what did you eat last night and for the last two days? Did you maintain the diet that you want to in the last few days? Mm -hmm. Because it is, it can be to that individual's loss if he thinks that he is doing it, but in reality is not. Mm -hmm. So he has to take care that if you say it, that you have the discipline to follow through because that's important. Otherwise, you're not giving yourself what your body needs. Yeah. Thank you for that, uh, Dr. Ramadan. So we have a question in the chat uh, from someone who is uh, asking for some guidance uh, for individuals who don't have medical coverage. 
All right, so if you're without medical insurance, how do you arm yourself uh, against the dangers that uh, flu season brings with it, obviously with you know COVID-19 and all the different variants of that? How, what recommendations do you have for those individuals? The public health department. Okay. The public health department uh, is, is, is always there. They provide uh, those uh, uh, vaccines free of charge. Uh, the uh, uh, public health department and the uh, uh, Stroger Hospital or that healthcare system is available with its clinics. Mm. I worked there for many years and it provides care even if you don't have insurance coverage. So uh, it, it takes... You have to be aggressive to find these, uh, these resources so that you can benefit from them. You can't say, well, I'm just not hurting now, or I'm not feeling pain, or I'm not uh, infected with anything at this point. So I'm going to just continue until I come down with something, and then I'll look. Mm -hmm. Too often, that's too late. Too often, if you wait for symptoms to develop, then something is far advanced inside of you, and the treatment is less effective, and, uh, and your uh, lifespan, uh, even under treatment, is shortened. Mm -hmm. And we see that in the health disparities uh, mm -hmm. with African Americans. So we can't wait. You have to, you have to be, uh, 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 take this upon yourself and for your family uh, to take these steps. And this is why the screenings are so important. We die faster than anyone from uh, cancers. Uh, we die faster than anyone from COVID. We die faster than anyone from diabetes yeah. <laughs> and lung disease. And we cannot wait till we are symptomatic, struggling with it until we have these things addressed. So we have to go through the public health department, through the public health clinics, take the time, travel. And uh, if you have to, uh, uh, to go outside of our community to get the necessary uh, foods and nutrition, we have to do that. Absolutely. Thank you for that. Uh, this question comes from Dr. Gloria. Um, her question is, um, there's so many people who have uh, gotten COVID who now think that they are immune and no longer um, wear a mask. Can you talk to us about the, the reality of how COVID is transmitted, whether or not there is immunity once you've contracted um, the virus? And again, how do you continue to protect yourself even if you've had it already? Because we know you can get it again. There's plenty of cases of, of folks having contracted it more than once. But can you talk a little bit about how it's, it's transmitted? Has anything changed in the last, you know, half a year that we should be concerned about? Uh, it's still airborne. It is still airborne. And uh, as I said, my son uh, caught it at a, a, a Disney, <laughs> Disney <laughs> on Ice event. <laughs> <laughs> and, and he had his shots. <laughs> yeah. he, he was missing one booster. But there was a lot of kids there, and uh, so that was almost like a super spreader event, okay? So <laughs> we could catch it. And, uh, you know, he could have uh, uh, been in trouble if he was unvaccinated and older. Mm -hmm. okay? So um, I would, that's why I said don't unpack your, uh, don't unpack away your mask. Uh, some of those guidelines I still follow. Okay, uh, I still am aware of the distance I am between people. If I'm going to an inside event, uh, I will wear my mask. And, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's very important. Uh, even in, in family events, be cognizant. Uh, you know, if everybody is uh, vaccinated there or, or who's unvaccinated, uh, you should be kind of uh, aware of this. Even though it's being downplayed, that's uh, uh, people want to put uh, COVID in the rearview mirror. It's not there yet, 
and it's really going to come around to the front again. So uh, the guidelines, the hand sanitizers, the face masks, all of those things uh, will uh, have uh, lessen the uh, flu uh, that we've seen, and uh, that because they are effective. Yeah. Uh, in 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 past years, between thirty to fifty thousand people a year would die from the flu alone, but uh, that's been down uh, since we've uh, used the guidelines and the face mask. So. Uh, I, I still would have it in the car and, uh, and use it. Uh, if you have any question in your mind, put it on. Yeah. Uh, this question is from uh, Brother Bashir. Um, he's asking for some, some clarity on sort of the outlook uh, for control of, of COVID and in, in, in similar um, viruses. And I want to I wanna add on to that if I can. And you just kind of spoke to it a little bit a few minutes ago. I think we all suffer or have suffered from COVID, you know, fatigue, right? Like people are tired of masking. We're tired of sort of restricting our daily activities because of COVID. Um, and some of us have just accepted the fact that this is going to be a part of our reality. Uh, will there be uh, in the near future, will there be a time when COVID is fully in our rearview mirror, much like, I don't know, polio, like, you know, I guess people still get it, but we don't, we don't really think about it anymore. Or is this something that we're always going to be dealing with for the, the foreseeable future? Uh, what uh, Your last statement is more true. Okay. Something that we're going to be dealing with. It's going to very likely uh, become endemic. Mm. There was a time, there was a time, there was a window, in, in my opinion, that uh, we could have possibly eradicated it. Mm. Um, this was a time when uh, you heard the discussions about herd immunity. And uh, that was a time when, uh, uh, when the vaccines just came out, the guidelines were in play. Um, if we could have gotten a high percent of our population to take uh, the vaccine at one time, okay, mm -hmm. that uh, we could have really impacted it. And, uh, you know, perhaps uh, knocked out that variant. Uh, but by not doing so, by not doing so, uh, many uh, uh, red states uh, didn't believe that it existed, uh, was uh, politically uh, 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 anathema, uh, that... Uh, uh, for, for many other reasons, uh, many of us didn't take the vaccine. So the reason why we're in a fairly good state now is because herd immunity has been in effect. Mm. Natural immunity has occurred with, uh, with the uh, people who have had uh, uh, COVID, mm -hmm. survived it, and with those who have taken the vaccine. That has made a pool of antibodies out there that have uh, uh, dealt with the virus head on. Yeah. So that uh, 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 many people who haven't taken the vaccine still find themselves in a safe zone because mm -hmm. so many people have antibodies and uh, the, they are walking around in the midst of, of it all. Yeah. So uh, that's, that's how, uh, but, uh, you know, we, the battle has been going on, and uh, because we didn't uh, 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 come up front uh, and jump on board when we could have, uh, it's uh, uh, become just a uh, back and forth now, and that's where we are. Yeah. Problem is that that allows new variants to percolate. Right. That's what that does. When we did knock it out, new variants. Uh, uh, can mutate and uh, and compete with one another to who's going to take the forefront. Can you uh, guide us and provide some direction as to where uh, people should go? What resources should people access for legitimate medical information and guidance? So, I mean, you talk about how we lost, that window passed, and I, I believe that uh, so much of the the fear uh, 
and reluctance to get vaccinated was fueled by what I like to call Facebook physicians, right? People who, who get on Facebook and post these crazy messages. They have no, no degree in medicine or science, but they, you know, heard something and they posted and people pay attention to those kinds of things, unfortunately. Not everybody has access to someone like you. And I'll speak for myself when I said, when, when you came out and said that the vaccine was safe, it was something that, that we should strongly consider, that made me feel better, right? I was, I was more likely at that point, you know, because of your guidance. Not everybody has access to a Dr. Ramadan. So what do you suggest people do to go get information to help them make these kinds of decisions? That's a space that we are trying to fill with the Muslim Health Consortium. <laughs> the Muslim Health Consortium, we saw early on uh, the need, especially in our community, uh, uh, we wanted to fill the space of a trusted source, yeah. somebody who had our interests at heart, uh, African-Americans and, and the issues that we had as Muslims and, uh, you know, and deal with our concerns and issues. That's what uh, the uh, founding principles of the Muslim Health Consortium uh, is. But uh, it's important to find uh, somebody that uh, you trust, uh, that you have faith in, and that uh, it might be your own doctor or, mm -hmm. or whatever, that, uh, uh, that you uh, uh, that trust them. Because the, the information is, is, uh, is complex, and uh, there are many forces at play, okay? There are many forces at play, and... Uh, some things we didn't recommend, and uh, we weren't uh, we weren't convinced that they were needed. And uh, something it has to be uh, evidence based, right? And uh, it has to be uh, of greater benefit than any uh, harm that may occur. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Feel free to uh, place your questions in the chat. Um, or raise your hand and I can call on you for you to make a comment um, if you're so moved to do so. I, I have a question, I guess, while, while folks are, are sort of thinking um, uh, of questions or comments that they want to make. And, and my question is, um, what do you see as uh, the greatest challenge uh, for our community moving forward relative to not just COVID-19, but improving the overall health and wellness of our community. You mentioned physical wellness, but you also spoke about uh, mental and emotional wellness. What, what are some of the challenges or barriers that we're gonna have to confront? So we aren't just reacting, we're acting in a proactive way that we can get out in front of as we prepare for the next 10 or 15 years. That, uh... That's, that, that's a very good question. And uh, that's what we wanted. Uh, we, we hope that we open the discussion on that today. Yeah. Uh, it is, we have a couple fronts. We have to sustain ourselves in what I think is uh, coming down the pike. Okay. Mm -hmm. Not only the viruses, but uh, the economy, the financial situation, the, uh, uh, the faltering institutions, um, all of these things. Uh, we have to uh, uh, maintain ourselves, mm -hmm. position ourselves, okay? This is why uh, we include uh, things like uh, emergency preparedness mm -hmm. and supplies and family financial planning and all of these things, they are part of the health and wellness of ourselves and our community. So it, it is not only years ago, if I can pump weight and press and build muscles, that means I'm a healthy person. No, it means you still got a mind and a spirit, you got a finance, you got a family, you got the conditions, you got things falling around, around you uh how has that how have you prepared for that mm. you might be living in a place of hurricane or fire or drought you know all of this has to be factored in so 
uh, that's the, if we, first you got to expand the definition because if you don't do that, you won't even look at it like that. Mm -hmm. You'll just look at it like I will deal with it if it comes to me. Mm -hmm. But you have to be forward thinking and anticipate what, uh, what may occur. Yeah, yeah. Um, we have a, a question in the chat from uh, Brother Bashir. Uh, Amir Muhammad expounded upon the uh, myth in our society. Do you think that some of these myths cause many people not to be accepting of vaccinations or, or vaccines in general? Yes, yes, yes. There, there's, uh, you know, we have a lot of uh, anti-vaxxers out there. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of people who think that, uh, that you know, they're trying to uh, poison us. <laughs> yeah. They're trying to waste us. And uh, this early on was a real problem in our community. I must admit, to a degree, I could see where the potential for danger to us was present. Oh, of course. Until I reflected, and I wrote on this, till I reflected on, Imam Muhammad grabbing the American flag and walking across the stage with it. I said, it's time to put that down. Mm. And we see that over the past two years, all of that has been dispelled. Back early on with the virus, they were saying, we're going to die. You're going to die. It's uh, transmitters in it. It's going to waste our people. Uh, they're giving us a different vaccine. And during the course, we saw them coming in our community, taking the vaccine out of our community, taking it, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. And we saw a million people die from, uh, from COVID. So this should be proof that uh, let those fears go and all of those myths. And uh, we still had Tuskegee ghosts yeah. Yeah. Uh, that, uh, that we had to deal with. So. These are real uh, issues and uh, I'm, seem to be jumping around, but this is why I gave those a uh, few hadiths mm. that uh, early on, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, take medicine. All of these things uh, are the will of Allah and that they're not counteracting the will of Allah. So do not, uh, don't think uh, your religion uh, you can't take these things because of our religion. That's not true. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. It's so much. So much uh, misinformation. I mean, you know, the truth isn't the truth anymore in, in many people's eyes. Right. Everything is is under attack. Everything is debatable. People who have no uh, documented expertise are now experts in everything. It's just uh, it's hard to wade through all of that. Um, and that's why I think it's important to have people like you and others who, uh, who serve as, as our localized experts that we can turn to for this very valuable um, information. So um, I want to thank all of you for participating on behalf of uh, the Master Dal Taqwa Talim Planning Committee, uh, Dr. Aisha El Amin and Dr. Gloria Bashir. I want to thank you all for coming out. I uh, want to offer our biggest thanks, though, to uh, Dr. Uh, Ramadan for sharing his wisdom and his uh, valuable insights um, uh, with us today. And uh, as always, we, we give all praise to Allah for um, surrounding us with such wonderful people in our community. We ask that he continue to strengthen uh, and fortify uh, our community and the relationships that we have within uh, the community. Uh, if there's no more questions, I would like to, to close us out. Or oh, any comments, Dr. Ramadan, before we close out? No. <laughs>